All right, everyone, welcome. Uh, we are going to go over the SPSS frequencies and descriptive statistics assignment. So I uh, was on the serial killer profile scale. So uh, sort of a goofy scale, but uh, someone put it together. Uh, theoretically, these are all traits or the opposites of traits that are associated with uh, profiles of serial killers. And so, uh, you know, one might argue that the more of such traits you have, you might have a higher propensity for being a serial killer. But of course, this is just a joke. I did want to point out that some of the items are uh, backwards worded. So actually, for example, um, uh, if you do not uh, have a, a uh, significant or typically have a significant other in your life, that's actually associated with uh, higher likelihood of being a um, serial killer. So no is what got points on the bolded ones. We call that reverse uh, wording. And so um, I wanted to point it out to you because this is an actual example of it. So going down, I have the data file open and uh, I take you through running basic frequencies and then running frequencies by subgroup, which is a different procedure. So um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do these. So step number one, go to analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. So we're going to move both study group and serial killer profile score over to the variables box. And the statistics button right there. Uh, we want to select measures of central tendency. So boom, boom, boom. Um, measures of dispersion, standard deviation, variance, um, <clears throat> and range. So standard deviation, variance, and range. I also tell you to get skewness over there and uh, get your percentile values, your quartiles, which is over here. So you get your quartiles and um, that's it for this particular screen. Under uh, charts, I tell you to go ahead and get a chart, specifically get a histogram and you can or cannot show the normal curve depending on what you wanna do. Click okay and boom, we get our output. So every time you run frequencies, you always get a frequency distribution of each variable. Um, so we have our frequency distribution of serial killer profile scores and our frequency distribution of study group. We got our statistics up here and then finally our uh, histograms at the bottom. Note how weird the histogram looks for study group. It is a nominal variable. They look like this. They don't make a whole lot of sense. So scooching on, we, uh, I then have you try a new procedure. This new procedure is called descriptives. And again, it is used to get statistics for all cases combined. So um, I will go ahead and do that. That's under analyze descriptive statistics and descriptives. And again, I tell you to put study group and serial killer profile score in the variables box. Under the options button, Get the mean, sum, measures of dispersion, et cetera. And so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to get the sum, we're going to get the variance, and we're going to get the range. Standard deviation was already selected. And of course, we want to get skewness down here. Click continue. And there's no graphs in here. It's just the script or statistics. And note the output is way shorter. <laughs> so one of the reasons I wanted to show you this is that the output is way shorter. So you can quickly get the script of statistics. So um, finally, so I, I guess one point is uh, note that it added the descriptives. It doesn't write over uh, what you did before, it just adds it. So it concatenates it. We had frequencies and we did descriptives. We're about to do explore. So the explore procedure is commonly forgotten by students, but it's actually pretty useful um, because uh, uh, you can get uh, statistics for subgroups of some other variable. So under descriptive statistics and explore, we have a dependent factor and label cases by. Our dependent variable is serial killer profile scores. Our factor list is steady group. That's kind of like their version in here for the IV. Um, and what's going to happen is for every level of this, and there's three levels, we're going to get separate stats for this, the DV serial killer profile scores. 
So in the statistics window, which I tell you to click, <clears throat> I tell you to do a couple things. Uh, make sure descriptives is selected and it's going to give you a default of way more than you would ever want in the world. Um, and so that's it. Just telling you to do that. Click continue under plots. I tell you to go ahead and make sure that box plots is selected. Get rid of stem and leaf and get histogram. And um, we will get these things separately for each group of study group. So um, when I click OK, we will run our explore procedure. Again, it just concatenates it, just adds it at the bottom. And in here, we have descriptives for kids who kick puppies, kids who don't kick puppies, and prior Alliance students. Then you get frequency, excuse me, um, histograms for each group of their serial killer profile scores. And finally, you get a box plot at the bottom. So let's go ahead and start answering questions. That is everything I asked you to do. So different descriptive procedures are good for answering different questions. Specifically, uh, subgroups are best answered by uh, the explore procedure and anything with a frequency distribution or I'm asking you about frequency or percent. Yeah, that's going to be the frequency procedure. But if all you need is simple things like means and standard deviations, that's where descriptives is very useful. So what is the mean serial killer profile score for all the cases combined? All right, let's figure it out. So going to the top, there's more than one place where we can answer this, but serial killer profile scores mean of 12.39 that is the answer that the average serial killer profile score for all participants that is frequencies was 12.39 the other way to do it is the descriptives output and get the same thing so um different statistics up top we want the mean serial killer profile score 12.39 so hopefully here you put 12.39 all right, so what is the most commonly occurring serial killer profile score for all cases combined? So what am I asking you there? I'm asking you uh, what, what value of serial killer has the highest uh, frequency? So a couple of ways to answer that. I think um, the most difficult is to go to the frequency distribution, uh, scroll down until you see the one that has the biggest one. Oh, what do you know? There's, oh, there is a six by itself. So I was going to say it's multimodal, but there is a six. So it looks like 15 is the uh, most commonly occurring score. Easier way to do it is go up to your statistics that are here and your frequencies output, serial color profile score, go to the mode, 15. The answer is 15. All right, what value divides in half the distribution of serial killer profile scores? for all the cases combined? Good question. So what am I asking you here? I'm asking you, what is the score that's in the center of the distribution? Not mathematically, but literally it's the center case in the distribution. And there's another name for that. The score that divides a distribution in half is the median. And so the easiest way to do it is find your median. There it is, 12. And that would be your answer. Let's see if it's in the descriptives. So what do we get here? We get mean, sum, standard deviation, uh, skewness. Nope, we don't get it there. So that is a stat that you would need to get from your frequencies and select it under the statistics option. So the median is 12. 12 is the score that divides the distribution into 50-50. What is the mean steady group for all cases combined? All right, well, um, again, there's multiple places to get that. We've got an answer of two. Um, and down here on descriptives, you've got an answer of two. So, I mean, technically, technically the answer is two. <laughs> so why is that? Why is that goofy? Why don't you want to report two? Well, um, what does it mean? Mean steady group, right? This is kids who kick puppies, kids who don't kick puppies and prior Alliance students. So the mean is just the group in the middle. What, what does that even mean? They're all equally distributed. So it's goofy or it's wrong to report the mean for steady group because it's a nominal variable. So because it is a nominal variable, um, you wouldn't report the mean, right? So what measure essential tendency is appropriate for uh, uh, variables that uh, are nominal scaled? Well, if you remember back to the lecture, 
that is our mode. So what is the mode for study group? The mode is one. What does that mean? It's also not super useful, but that is 1.0 or just one. Um, it tells you multiple modes exist. The smallest value is shown. Not super meaningful, is it? It's just the lowest mode. In fact, all groups occurred equally, and that's 19, 19, 19, and it just picks one. So again, mode is not uh, world's most useful statistic that you'll learn. It is, however, the only thing you can do with nominal data, and this just proves the point that it's not particularly useful. All right, so what percentage of all the cases combined have a serial killer profile score of 17? All cases combined have a serial killer profile score of 17. All right, where do we look for that? Well, we're, I'm asking you about a percentage and to get percentages, we need to look at our frequency distribution. So all cases have a combined serial killer profile score of 17. Find 17 in the table. There's four. The answer is 7%. So it's 7.0, 7% 7 of all participants had a serial killer profile score of 17, right? All right, so what percentage of all the cases combined have a serial killer profile score of 19 or 20? Um, sort of a trick question, but just to get you thinking. So um, this is these are all the values of serial killer profile score that did occur. You can see it was 3 to 19. No one got a 20. So <laughs> there is no 20. So when I ask you, um, they had what percent, uh, what number, sorry at a profile score of 19 or 20, it's gonna be just three because three people had a score of 19 and zero had a score of 20. So the answer here is three. What percentage of all the cases combined have a serial killer profile score higher than 15? Hmm, what are we gonna to use to answer that? Well, let's see, we're back at scores and now we're looking for percentage. We happen to have a percentage about a uh, statistic in here that you can use to determine um, what percent were a value or lower. What is that? Well, um, cumulative percent. So cumulative percent tells the percent of cases who had that particular value, say 12 or lower, 50.9. We go to 15, the value for serial killer profile score of 15, you see that 73.7% of everyone in the sample, all cases combined, had a score that was um, uh, 15 or lower, right? But that's not what the question asks. It says higher than 15. So 73.7% had a score that was 15 or lower. We got to do a little teeny bit of math here. 100 minus that 73.7 is going to give us the percent that were higher than 15. So 100 minus 73.7. Uh, gives us 26.3. So again, the 15 was 73.7. So 73.7 had a score that was 15 or lower. That means 100 minus that, that is 26.3% had a score higher than 15. So 26.3. What is the shape of the distribution of serial color profile scores for all cases combined? Well, um, a couple ways to answer that. There's a way I, I don't want you to do it, which I'll show you first, and then the way I want you to do it, I'll show it next. So here is what you would normally think of you would do to find what shape the distribution is. And you could look at here and kind of guess, and it's a little bit kind of, I don't know, negatively skewed maybe or whatever, I don't know. The correct way to answer this is using the skewness statistic. So the skewness statistic is available in two of these places right here, negative 0.188. Right. And so the rule is if the absolute value of this thing is less than two, you basically have a normal distribution. So the absolute value of negative 0.188 is less than two. So you would say for all oops, for all intents and purposes, you have something that's normal or normal enough, whatever, however you're comfortable saying that. Why again? The skewness statistic for serial killer profile was less than absolute value was less than two. So the other place you can get skewness is under descriptives. It's out here at the end for serial killer profiles, the middle row here, again, it's the same number. It's less than absolute value. It's absolute value is less than two, so not skewed, basically normal. 
All right, so now we're gonna talk about separate uh, statistics for different subgroups. So let's go ahead and do this. So what is the mean and standard deviation serial killer profile score for each subgroup? That's explore, because explore tells us or gives us statistics as a function of uh, a different levels of a different variable. So you can see we've got one, two, three in here. And for each one, there was 19. And then the stats also distribute similarly. So let me open this window since we need a little bit more room here. So this first section is all statistics on serial killer profile scores, but just for kids who kicked puppies. Right? So um, their mean is right here, 15.74. So their mean was 15.74. What was their standard deviation right here? So again, how much on average the kids who kick puppies serial killer scores deviated from that is uh, 2.3. We're going to round that to eight. So 2.38. It's two decimals. All right. How about kids who didn't kick puppies? There they are. 13.42 is the mean for kids who didn't kick puppies. So 13.42. Their standard deviation is right here, 2.87. So what that would round to. How about prior reliance students? So what is their mean serial killer score? That's in this section, 8.00. All right, and what is their standard deviation? Uh, 2.26. So in terms of rounding rules, I tend to use the, the rules that Excel uses. So five or bigger round up. Um, less than five, just drop it. So um, in case I haven't mentioned it, most things are rounded to two decimals in uh, APA format, not everything. Percentages tend to be rounded to one decimal, and then there's always exceptions to the general rules, but usually two decimals, you can't go too wrong. Be right most of the time anyway. So which subgroup had the least dispersion slash variability in serial killer profile scores? Um, and then we're gonna ask which one had most. So there's lots and lots of different ways to answer this. Um, one way to answer it. So you gotta, first of all, you gotta pick your measure of dispersion or variability. And because there's multiple here, um, you know, you can answer this multiple ways. So let's do it based on um, say the range. Okay, so the range is a measure of variability. It's, I told you it's not a particularly good one, but hey, um, it is, so bigger range means more variability, so smaller range is less variability. So we got an eight, a 10, or a nine. So which one is the lowest? Eight, that would be prior Alliance students. Um, the range isn't the best measure of central tendency for uh, serial killer profile scores, right? Because it's interval scale of measurement. So. Uh, we would probably want to use a better measure of variability, probably the standard deviation. So um, actually, I, I guess we could do the, the interquartile range, uh, three, five, three, which one had the least variability? Oh, now we got two, right? And again, just sort of demonstrating why the interquartile range isn't particularly useful. Um, we would be saying both prior Alliance students and also kids who kicked puppies. So I'm going to use the standard deviations. It is, according to the lecture, what I told you, the recommended uh, measure of variability for interval or ratio data. So the standard deviation for kids to kick puppies is 2.377. Actually, I guess it's right here. 2.38. The, the one for uh, kids who didn't kick puppies is 2.87. It's wider. And the one for uh, uh, prior reliance students is 2.26. Which one of these is the smallest number? Well, it's prior Alliance students. So I'm going to say prior Alliance students. I think one additional way to do this is to look at the subgroups and talk about the uh, spread of the boxes, right? Um, and here it looks like the least, it's either this one or this one, can't tell. Um, <laughs> it's probably not the best way to try to get this answer, right? This one is the most though, I bet. See how it's the whitest box compared to these? But these two are really close, so who knows? All right, so which one has the least variability? Um, well, where did I type? Whoa, what happened to, did I not type Alliance students? I thought I did. Did I accidentally hit undo? Huh, let me try again. So which group has the least dispersion or variability? It's uh, prior Alliance students, prior 
plant students. Thought I hit that. Uh, which subgroup has a, the most variability or dispersion? Find the biggest standard deviation. That's going to be kids who didn't kick puppies. So kids who didn't kick puppies. Be your answer there. Why they got the biggest standard deviation? So again, um, of all the different ways to do it, I would use standard deviation to answer this particular question. All right. So what is the skewness statistic? And then give me the shape for each subgroup. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's skewness for kids who kick puppies is negative 0.732. So I'm probably gonna round that sucker too, to negative 0.73. Um, is that two or bigger absolute value? No. So what would we say? We would say that this is basically normal. That's what we would say for the shape. How about kids who didn't kick puppies? Their um, skewness coefficient is 0 0.3, if we round it, 3, 0 0.33. Is this uh, absolute value of this greater than a uh, 2.0? No, it's not. So we would say that this is basically normal. Finally, for prior alliance students, their skewness coefficient was negative 0.387. So we'll round that to negative 0 0.39 negative 0 0.39. And is this the absolute value of this number two or bigger? No, it's not. So once again, we have something that is basically normal. All right, normal, normal, normal. And again, why? Because none of the skewness coefficients had an absolute value that was two or bigger. So then finally, using the box plot as evidence, way at the bottom here, um, and pretending SKP is valid, which subgroup appears to have the lowest propensity to become serial killers? This group has the highest. So um, what are we asking here? Well, we're asking for sort of what is a, a typical score for the different groups that you could use to characterize them? Well, in here, we don't have the means, right? What do we have? We've got the uh, uh, 75th and 25th quartiles. We've got the median. And we've got the extreme, which scores are uh, uh, the farthest scores in the distribution that aren't um, uh, outliers. And then we have outliers, right? So all the goodies in there. So the lowest propensity, oh, here's where I wrote prior Alliance students earlier. <laughs> Let's see if it's right. To, um, so who, who has the lowest propensity? It's gonna be the one that has the lowest median, right? That's who it's gonna be. And lo and behold, using the median as a measure of central tendency or typical score for a group, who's the lowest prior alliance students, turns out that answer that I wrote there by accident isn't all that wrong, that's right. So who's got the highest propensity? So I'm asking you who's got the highest median and that's gonna be kids who kick puppies. So final answer is kids who kick, kicked, I guess, past tense puppies. And that is your assignment. Make sure you put your name on your output. If you're not doing that, you need to make sure you do that. Double click, click in there and say, Scott, your name. And you gotta click out of it so that it's not selected anymore. Then do your export. So make sure you do your export and you export it. And um, make sure you put your name on these before you turn them in as well. And do always turn these in because uh, starting this week and forward, there's answers on here. Can't even spell my own name. Um, and that was your assignment. So I hope that that made sense. And um, let me know if you have any questions.